Welcome to a new in the mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. And I'm gonna start with this uh, little board, which is an Ethernet shield type of module. And this guy can bring TCP IP connectivity to your project uh, via an SPI bus. So this could mean any microcontroller that is able to talk over SPI to this chip can become internet connected. Now, of course, these days the ESP32 is pretty popular, everyone is using Wi-Fi, but for the highest reliability in uh, network connectivity, wired connections are still preferred. And uh, there are also other microcontrollers that do not have a built-in Ethernet interface, so you need to add it externally with something like this. And this guy is fairly inexpensive, so I think it's worth keeping one of these around. Uh, however, interfacing to it might not be as trivial, so it's best to stick to the platforms that already have libraries written for this chip, like Arduino. Same as always, you will find a link to this in the description below the video. Before we go on with the next items, let me mention the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, which is the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Voldog channel. And right now they are running a Raspberry Pico contest. If you built an original Raspberry Pico project or are planning to build one, you can receive another Raspberry Pico for free by submitting your project in the contest. Check out their website linked below. Next up, I got myself some uh, RF uh, SMA connectors and some a uh, supposedly RG402 coaxial cable to build some new antennas for my FPV adventures. I recently got a new pair of goggles which use the different gender uh, style of connectors, so all of my previous antennas are no longer compatible. Unfortunately, it seems the seller sent me a different type of cable. I should have received uh, the uh, same one as this uh, blue patch, which is a, a little thinner, just perfect for the SMA uh, connectors. What I got is slightly thicker and uh, this will not fit the SMA connectors that I got. I hate it when this happens because I've already waited for two months for this to be delivered by mail and now I have to waste another two months to wait for another order. And on top of that, what can happen when you open a dispute, AliExpress can ask you to send the item back for a full refund. So are you going to send a $2 product back for a cost of I don't know, it's like $25 to ship something to China to get a full refund of $2? I don't think so, and they know it. So instead they offer you like a 50% refund. But what can I say? This is the joy of ordering from AliExpress. Uh, sometimes things can go wrong. And in this small bag, I have a uh, SMA load kit for the Nano VNA, and these would be a short and an open and a 50 ohm uh, plus a small adapter. These are useful to keep as spare. They're very small, so they're easy to get lost and probably not the best quality, but good enough for something like the Nano VNA and my hobby projects. Next up, I have a couple of uh, USB thumb drive type enclosures and you can find these from the uh, big name uh, brand players from the known distributors. But I figured I should order a couple of samples from AliExpress just to check them out for a uh, project I'm working on. And they are available in a variety of shapes and sizes. And as far as uh, I can tell, uh, they are all designed for USB type A connectors. And one good alternative if you're building some uh, hobby one-off type projects is to search through your box of old electronics and salvage an old enclosure and just design your PCB based on that. For example, I have this very old card reader which provides quite a bit of space inside this enclosure and I could certainly uh, see myself reusing this for a one-off project. Next, I have ordered a couple of these uh, desiccant humidifier kits and they come in nice plastic boxes which means you can toss them into your sensitive electronics gear bag or inside a plastic bin where you keep your 3D printing filament and that's what I intend to do. Once they're filled with uh, humidity, uh, with water, you can bake them for reactivation, but you need to be careful to extract the beads from the plastic enclosure and uh, bake it separately, otherwise uh, this will melt. Next, I got myself a big lot of these small arrow stickers. And I don't ever need these many, but uh, it was the minimum order quantity. And the purpose of these is to help me when doing small to medium board production runs. During testing, if you find a particular problem with the board, you stick one of these 
little arrows to pinpoint the problem on the board and then you pass it to the next operator which is supposed to fix it or in my case I will fix it myself later on when I move to the next step in the uh, production process. Now if you're interested in this you will find a link in the description below the video. A while ago I showed this PCB holder clamp type of uh, gadget. You're supposed to clamp the PCB in between these two edges and it has a magnet base but I didn't have any metal base to attach this to so back then I ordered one of these small cutting mats with the intention of potentially uh, adding a sheet of steel to the bottom of this and turning it into a soldering mat type of uh, thing where I could attach my magnetic PCB holder. I still need to find a sheet of steel but I'm slowly getting there and I'm gonna be able to test my idea pretty soon. Something that I've always wanted to play with and experiment are these load cells and there are many applications for these ranging from industrial big structure monitoring to weight measurement and they come in different configurations like half bridge or full bridge uh, resistive strains and they can be rated for a very wide range of loads but one thing is certain you will all you will also need some way of measuring this and amplifying the signal coming out of these. And the typical chip that you'll find on AliExpress is, is the HX711. And I have a breakout board with uh, this chip here. These are very inexpensive and easily accessible on AliExpress. And this chip has everything you need uh, built in and provides a digital interface over which you can get the readings. I just ordered uh, a few different models of these strains just to play with them with no particular uh, intention or project in mind. Next I got a couple of these uh, PET plastic bottles, two different types which I find quite handy. These spray ones I use for disinfecting liquid which is uh, like 75% IPA plus distilled water and I use it to clean my gadgets like the smartphone, the watch, computer mouse, stuff like that. And these applicator ones are pretty nice for a uh, general purpose for when you need to like uh, dispense a fluid uh, which is a bit more viscous or even a liquid. Uh, these work pretty nicely. I found this next product in the suggested product category and it's called liquid electrical tape. There isn't uh, much information uh, provided in here but I'm assuming it's some kind of silicon based adhesive that is pretty liquid and then uh, hardens and provides electrical insulation. They do show some example pictures where the stuff is uh, added to some exposed electrical connections to insulate them and they do mention that it's dielectric, waterproof, UV resistant and fast curing which are all nice things but no mention of the composition. In any case uh, I think I'll give this a try the next time I want waterproof some uh, connections exposed to the environment. It was fairly inexpensive so I figured it was uh, worthwhile adding this to my toolkit. Next up I have one of the smallest cooling fans I have ever seen and that's the only reason why I ordered it because I thought it's cool. This is a 25 by 25 millimeter fan running at 5 volts and as expected uh, the airflow provided by this little guy is like inexistent you can barely sense it uh, but could certainly make a difference for a very small product that needs uh, some airflow. Here it is powered up at 5 volts it's pulling a current of about 18 milliamps when it started and it's now at 16 milliamps. As expected the airflow provided by this little guy is not too much but uh, could certainly make a difference for a very small product that needs cooling. However being so small it uh, does make some noise and there's no solution for that unless you run it at a uh, smaller current uh, so you'll be getting less airflow. I, I'm gonna put this uh, close to my microphone so you can hear it. I mean it's not bad but you'll certainly hear uh, when this guy is on uh, in your little product. Ever since smartwatches became popular a bunch of charging cradles and attachments uh, became available and I think we can reuse those in our hobby projects. For example I ordered this very inexpensive one which has four connections. Uh, I'm assuming these are uh, VUSB, uh, ground, uh, data plus and data minus and by using the matching connector on your product you could very easily use this off-the-shelf solution to add a magnetic pogo pin type of USB interface to your product. There are many different models available on AliExpress so uh, I will put a link to like a search page uh, which shows different models 
of these connectors available for purchase. Next up, I got one of these uh, Secret Service type earphone set with a microphone. And this is a type that is discreet enough and can be hidden behind clothing. Uh, this piece of wire that comes up to your ear is transparent. Um, ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to have one of these. Don't know if I will ever use it, but it's something I've always dreamed of having. And shipping on this was extremely slow. Sometimes I get these very long shipping times. I believe it was over four months for this and it makes you wonder what exactly happened with your package. But anyway, this has a 3.5 millimeter jack and it also comes with this uh, switch and uh, I suppose a uh, microphone. Yep, yeah, there's the little pinhole for the microphone and it has a tactile switch which I believe can be used to answer a call or maybe trigger a transmit on a radio. Not sure of the pinout and whether or not this is compatible with just a mobile phone or with some radio equipment as well. I just wasn't too concerned with this when I ordered it. Uh, it was just something that I've always uh, wanted to have since I was a little kid. Next I ordered one of these 3 inch screen protection films with the intention of using them on the Unity thermal camera uh, on the display. So this is 3 inch, there should be two pieces in here. Yep, and let's see how well one of these uh, lines up with the size of the screen on the Unity. Yep, so it's, it's okay, but as you can see it will only be covering like the active uh, area of the display uh, but there's no way you can get this shape like to find a screen protector with this shape so maybe you could go up to like 3.2 or 3.5 inch and then diagonally cut the corners of the protection film if you want to cover more of this area uh, but if not just go with one of these 3 inch uh, protection screens that are uh, meant to be installed on like the screens of uh, DSLR cameras. My next item is a USB Type-C to Ethernet adapter and I need one of these because my laptop does not have an Ethernet port anymore and that's not an issue while I'm working at my desk I use a USB Type-C hub which has all the connection I need including Ethernet and I'll talk about the hub I use in a minute but for example when I had to debug and fix a network issue in the office building I, ha I found myself unable to plug my laptop into a wired switch to uh, check stuff in there. So this should have me covered for a future occasion. It's a generic one. I didn't feel like spending more for a known brand just because it will be rarely used. Uh, I mean the, cons the construction quality is okay. This feels like an aluminum enclosure. The wire is a bit stiff which uh, is not great but like I said for the type of use cases where where uh, this will be put to to work uh, that's fine and also for the uh, the cost uh, it's it's pretty acceptable and this is the USB hub which I have been using for the past couple of months on my Lenovo X1 Carbon it's from uh, base US you know I like their products even though I don't believe uh, they actually manufacture them they're probably just rebranding this but nonetheless I do think they have a say in the quality of the products which show their brand name and I've been pretty happy with the quality of their products as you can see this hub has a single connection with the laptop via this USB type C and it provides power to the laptop while at the same time providing all of these other uh, interfaces. So uh, myself I'm using a dual monitor setup over HDMI. Uh, I believe I'm running my monitors at a resolution of uh, 1920 by 1200 pixel, uh, 50 or 60 hertz refresh rate. Everything just works uh, nice so far I've had no issues with this whatsoever however if you plan to use one of these with the uh, newer uh, Max with the uh, M1 uh, chip a friend of mine tried it and uh, there are issues I don't remember exactly what the issues uh, were but it was related to the uh, HDMI monitors and not being able to set the resolution or refresh rate so it wasn't really usable but with Intel based Macs there isn't any issue as far as I know. So if you're in search for a uh, 
pretty nicely designed and a reliable USB Type-C hub. Like I said, I've been using this one for the past couple of months and it's been really reliable. And my last item in today's video is this USB smart card reader for the ISO 7816 standard. So this can help you with various authentication systems based on the ISO 7816 smart cards. And whatever the application is, it should detect an interface to this USB connected smart card reader. And it should allow you to scan a card and authenticate in the app based on that. I've always wanted to have one of these and uh, see if I can play with the DIY authentication system based on smart cards. Uh, since it was fairly inexpensive, uh, I just ordered one to uh, play with it in, in my hobby projects. This was all for today. Given the variety of the items shown in this video, it would be hard not to find something interesting to order, so I'm sorry if this video affected your account balance. If you'd like to support the channel to continue making videos like these, you can do so on Patreon with as little as $1 per month. And if you'd like to watch some of my previous mailbag videos, I will add a playlist on screen right now. There are over 100 mailbag videos in there. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time and don't forget to smash that like button.